Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So we are now coming into fall, or we are actually in fall, and we've already had several frosts here. So a lot of my garden is pretty much done. The majority of it is. I do have a couple of things that are still out here, but overall, most of the plants have kind of died off or are drying out. Uh, all the bright, vibrant colors of my celosia and zinnia have all kind of just turned to gray or brown. Uh, while I do have a couple of spots of color with some straw flower uh, and some coxcomb that's up by the greenhouse and some tea plants that are blossoming now this time of year, uh, pretty much everything else is pretty much done. So I haven't been out here doing any videos for a while. Uh, it's been over a month since I've posted anything, which I think is the longest I've gone since uh, starting the channel on a regular basis. Uh, so I, I'm sorry I haven't been out here, but I've been working on other projects. The weather hasn't always cooperated. And um, so I just haven't had a whole lot to put out, you know. So uh, speaking of other projects, uh, I'll put a couple links down below. But if you want to do something else to uh, help out the channel and uh, check out some of the other projects, I have been working on some uh, a music project here recently. Um, which uh, mainly writing a lot of lyrics and then doing a lot of uh, mixing and, and music production. Uh, I've got two tracks up on Spotify uh, and then there's a full album that's coming out on November 15th. So if you want to go to the link below and check out the couple of tracks I have on there now on Spotify, give me a follow. If you use Spotify, it's also like on Amazon, iTunes, iHeartRadio, a lot of other places too. Uh, so whatever you might use, Pandora. So if you use any of that stuff, want to check out the tracks, give me a follow, some listens, that would be awesome. Uh, but anyway, that's not gardening related. That's just some of the other stuff that I get into when I'm not doing gardening things. But today I'm out here doing a little bit of harvesting of uh, dried beans because this is a time of year with some of the pole type beans that I grow, that I let go to, um, well, not really let go to seed, but I, I let them stay on the vine until they dry out and then just harvest them and keep them as dried beans, both for replanting in the next season, as well as using for dried beans, mainly like in soups and in chili. This behind me here doesn't look like much. I have a couple other trellises in the back that include these as well, but I've got some Cherokee Trail of Tears black beans. Uh, this is an heirloom variety that is a vining type variety that, um, as the stories go, was one of the staples that uh, the Cherokee Nation had when they were on the Trail of Tears, when they were forced off their lands and made to move on to reservations, uh, where I think over 4,000 of them died along that march. Uh, but this was one of the... Uh, type of staples, one of the beans that they carried and, and grew to help with, uh, you know, resources and food. I believe they also used some of the black dried beans uh, that they would grind into pal uh, into like a flour that was then mixed with also different types of corn to make a type of flour for breads and those sorts of things. Uh, in in the late, I think I think it was 1977, but I'm not positive. Uh, Dr. Weechi, I still don't know if I pronounced that last name right, but uh, I've talked about Dr. Weechi's yellow tomatoes, which I highly recommend for your garden. They're a great big yellow slicer tomato. tomato. But Dr. Weechi was involved in a lot of other seed saving and whatnot. And in the late 1970s, I think it was 77, he donated uh, a bunch of seeds to of the Cherokee Trail of Tears black beans seeds to the Seed Savers Exchange. And so they've kind of, you know, now are available in a lot of places online, like Baker Creek sells them, Seed Savers Exchange, and there's a lot of other websites that sell them, but they're not a black bean that you would typically find in your grocery store, but they are great for growing. So I'm just out here, got my little basket, doing a little harvesting. Um, one thing that I've found with these is that they were much more resilient to the extreme hot weather than 
uh, some of my other vining beans. Where like my Scarlet Runner beans who that always do so well, this summer with multiple days and weeks with temperatures, with heat indexes that range between 100 and 110 degrees, the Scarlet Runners, their blossoms would come on and then just dry up and drop off. So they didn't really start producing any beans for me until August. Now I do have beans now that I'll be able to harvest, but it wouldn't be as big of a crop as what I would normally have. The difference that I found is that with these Cherokee Trail of Tears beans, their blossoms didn't drop off. They tended to uh, just keep going, hanging in there, and produced beans and started drying out for me by the end of the summer. Now I left them all on here until now, and I'll go around the garden in the different areas where I'm growing them and pick them so we can get them harvested. Now, if you want to grow these, you're definitely going to need trellising. I always recommend the, the cattle panels because they do really well with uh, pretty much anything that you want to grow up them that needs a trellis. Uh, these do get pretty long. They, um, I mean, I think this box is about that I'm growing them out of is about a foot or so off the ground, but they come all the way up, uh, what, like about eight feet or so, seven, eight feet above me. Um, and filled up half this hoop. I only grew them on one side of this hoop. They filled them out and they did a pretty decent job for as hot as the summer is. Now, you don't have to only grow these as um, a dried bean. You can use them as a snap bean if you pick the pods early before the beans really start getting, you know, the seeds inside start getting big and uh, filling out. Uh, now, I haven't done that, but I have read some things from people that have used them as a snap bean and they were very fond of them and said that um, not only were they very tasty, but that they also didn't have any strings or anything in them. So that's, you know, because some of those, some beans you grow, they've got, you got to pull the strings off, like greasy grit beans have, I think, one that goes down each side that you have to pull off because they're not so great for eating with the strings in them but these don't have those they also make if you let them go to the dried bean they make a very creamy uh, rich flavored black bean that you can add to your soups or chilies or you know or just uh, i'm also a fan of black beans just cooked up on their own with some cumin a little bit of onion um, you know, maybe you can add a little ranch dressing to it or something like that. That You know, anything that you would use a black bean for, like when you buy the black beans in the grocery store in the can, you could replace them with these and, you know, help keep this variety going because, um, well, there are a lot of places that do sell this now online. It's not one of the most popular ones, but it has, you know, a very important history it's a tasty bean and we need to keep it going, you know, keep the heirlooms going. Now, when the pods are, are young, they're green uh, and they continue to stay pretty green for a while. But now I don't have any, of course, young pods to show you, but I can tell you that as they start to mature, they do get a bit of a purple hue to them on the pod itself. Uh, and some of these are still retaining a little bit of the purple. I don't know how good this is gonna... See how good this comes up on the camera, but maybe you can see there is a little bit of purple still left on some of these here. Um, so they are a pretty bean, and then as they dry out, of course, they turn brown. Uh, and then on the inside, when you shell them, Let me pop a couple of these out here for you. Hopefully my camera is sticking with me on the focus. Sometimes it tends to bounce around a lot if I get too close. Let me see if I can't get a couple of these out. But once you shell them, and they're pretty easy to shell, you get a, you get a nice little black bean out of those there. 
So they're not very big, and it probably depends on your uh, environment with the, when you're growing them, on how big and plump they get, depending on how much water and what the temperatures are like. But they're a per, pretty prolific uh, bean that's great for a dried bean, or as I said, can be dual purpose. You can use them as a snap bean early in the season. Uh, so I'm gonna get the rest of these picked here, and then we'll finish up. All right, so I got a nice little batch in here of, let me make sure it's not on my microphone. I got, I got a nice batch in here that uh, I need to go shell now. I mean, this isn't a ton, but this was just off one little partial hoop that I had going on here in the back. Uh, so they do a pretty good job. They're, they're fairly prolific. I've got two full hoops of these in the back of my garden that I still have to go pick. And some of them I may have left on a little bit too long because like I mentioned earlier, they were starting to dry out probably mid late summer on some of them, the earlier ones that came in. Uh, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, you know, you can pick them as they dry and kind of work with them that way, or you can just kind of wait and do them all at once. Uh, just be aware that you might end up with ones that might not be as good anymore if they've been out there too long in the weather. But that's kind of it for my little harvest of Cherokee Trail of Tears black beans. I do recommend this variety of bean as long as you've got something to trellis them on. They are very easy to grow. They sprout very readily and then they you know kind of take off and they kind of take care of themselves i mean you might have to give them some water or uh, a little bit of weeding depending on if you're growing them out of the ground or doing them in a raised bed like i do but overall you don't have to do a whole lot with them especially if you leave them on the vine until they're completely dry you kind of like set it and forget it almost i think in my little box here i, I had to weed them once or twice this summer but they kind of just you know with putting some mulch on there that kept the weeds down and then they just kind of do their thing and then you just go out and harvest and so it's one of the least labor intensive uh, things that you can grow in your garden I would say uh, you know because you don't have to prune them or anything like that just plant and then harvest so I appreciate that you're hanging out with me here again today I'm sorry it's been so long since I've been around but we'll try to get a few more videos out here over the next uh, few weeks um, to kind of catch you up with a few other fall harvest things. I've got my scarlet runner beans. I've got cotton I'm harvesting. Um, I actually picked a big zucchini the other day and we do have another, I think, heavy frost coming in tonight. So I got to get a few more things out of here because I still have some cilantro and uh, green beans that have held on thanks to me putting some cover over them. Uh, but, you know, we're coming to the end of the 2024 growing season unless you're growing things inside or something like that. But we will see you all again soon, and I hope whatever's going on in your neck of the woods that you're getting some good fall harvest. And uh, put in the comments below, what are you harvesting right now? You got some butternut squash, you got some pumpkins, you got dried beans, what's going on in your, your area? But uh, I think I already said this, we'll see you again soon. <laughs> hope you're having a great day. Namaste.